Here we go with another example of this one-dimensional motion. We have the maximum braking acceleration of a car on a dry road is about 8 meters per second squared. If the two cars move head-on towards each other at 88 kilometers an hour and their drivers brake when they're 85 meters apart, will they collide? And if so, at what relative speed? If they don't collide, how far apart will they be when they stop? So just with any problem, we want to kind of get a little sketch of the situation first. So I'm just going to draw my line here. We have two drivers driving toward another. And notice that the problem starts giving us information right here at 85 meters apart. They break when they're 85 meters apart. So that's going to be where I base uh, my equations around. So we have two different cars and I'm going to start at 85 meters apart. So I'm gonna have this be my zero point, my origin, and I'm gonna have this be my 85 meter point. Now, I have two different cars, so I need two different pieces of information. So I'm gonna make a list here. This is gonna be my information for car number one. Give myself some room. For car number one. And that one's going to be this direction. So this is gonna be car number one moving at this direction and he hits his brakes right here, all right? So car number one, uh, we're gonna use the maximum braking acceleration. So if he's driving this direction and he's braking, that means his acceleration is in this direction. He's slowing down. So our acceleration for car number one is going to be negative eight meters per second squared because he's slowing down when he's driving to the right, okay? It says they're going 88 kilometers an hour when they hit their brakes, so his initial velocity is going to be 88 kilometers per hour, and they break when they're 85 meters apart. We said we're starting right here, so our initial velocity for car one, or excuse me, our initial position for car number one is going to be at zero. It's going to be at zero meters. All right. Now, we have a second car. We have this car number two. Car number two, let's say, is the one moving in this direction. So he's moving to the left, so his initial velocity is going to be negative, but his acceleration, since he's moving this way but slowing down, his acceleration is going to be this direction. So his acceleration is going to be positive with respect to um, this orientation. I accidentally deleted my error there. So his acceleration is going to be a positive eight meters per second squared. His initial velocity is the same, has the same magnitude, but he's driving to the left, so it's gonna be negative. It's negative 88 kilometers per hour. And his initial position, we decided, was right here. So he is at the end of this 85 meter gap so his initial position is going to be at 85 meters. Now the question asks, will they collide? Will they collide? What that essentially means, or how you can translate that, is will their positions be the same at the same time? So let's take a look at our kinematics and decide what to use here. So here's our kinematics for constant acceleration. We're assuming that they're breaking at this magnitude of eight meters per second squared constantly. So let's take a look here. We wanna know, are their positions gonna be the same at the same time? So we want something with the final position and time in the equation. These two are the only two that include both the position, their final position, or position as a function of time, and the time. So let's decide which one to use. This one down here includes the information we want and this one up here includes what we want, but it has this extra element of the final velocity. We don't know anything about the final velocity. If they don't collide, then that's gonna be zero at some point. If they do collide, then they're gonna be going some non-zero velocity when they do, but we don't know, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we don't want to use this final velocity. So we're gonna choose this right here, this, this position. Uh, this position function. So let's get our position functions for each of our cars. So for car number one, our position function is going to be x equals, I'm going to scoot this over just a tad, give some room. It's going to be x equals 
our initial position, but that was just zero. So I'm not gonna write anything for that. He started at zero plus initial velocity times time plus at squared over two. All right, and let's get one for car number two. We have x equals, and in this case, we have the initial position, which is not zero, plus v naught t plus at squared over two. And our question is, will they hit each other? Or in other words, is this ever going to happen? Is x going to equal, I'll keep my colors consistent, is x ever going to equal x? Is red x for car one gonna equal blue x? And this is the question, is this going to happen? So let's see, let's set these two equations equal to each other and figure out what we're gonna get here. So if we set them equal, on the left I get v naught t, so this gives us, we'll say, once we set them equal, we get V naught. Now, time is going to be shared. The initial velocity and the acceleration and the initial positions are different, but they're going to share the same time. So I'm gonna write that in the kind of a neutral color yellow. So, cause it's the same among both equations. V naught T, and then we have plus AT squared over two is that ever going to equal our equation in blue? Car two's initial position plus car two's initial velocity times its time and then plus A and then we have T squared and that's all over two. I accidentally wrote this T in red so I'm gonna Write that again in yellow, t squared, there we go. Okay, so let's plug in some numbers and figure out if this is ever gonna happen. So when I plug in my numbers, uh, I'm gonna switch over to the yellow color because I'm just using the colors to get the correct values. I'm gonna switch everything over to yellow here once we have the numbers plugged in. So our initial velocity for car one is up here, it's at 88 kilometers per hour. Now that's in kilometers per hour and we want meters per second, because everything else is in terms of meters. We have position in meters, we have acceleration in meters per second squared. So we wanna get this in terms of meters. So we'll do a quick conversion. So 88 kilometers per hour, and we know that there are 1,000 meters per kilometer, and also that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. And what does this give us? If we type that into the calculator, that gives us tw about 24.4 meters per second. And that's going to be the magnitude of the initial velocity that we use to keep our units consistent, just to keep our units consistent, all right? So plugging that number in and switching back to our yellow, now that we're plugging everything in, we have uh, 24.4 times t plus, now our acceleration for our red car we have up here and we denoted it as negative because it was accelerating left, it was slowing down while driving right. So that's going to be plus negative eight t squared over two equals. Our initial position for car number two was 85 meters. Our initial velocity for car number two is gonna have the same magnitude but it's going to be in the other direction. So we add negative 24.4. And, and then that's supposed to be multiplied by time. And then plus the acceleration for car number two was positive. So eight T squared over two, eight T squared over two. Okay, so what happens if we try to solve this equation for T? So we're gonna see, do they collide? And this is gonna tell us when they collide. So let's see, I have a positive eight over two t squared, so that's positive four. I have a negative four t squared on this side, so I'm gonna add that. So I have the positive four t squared plus the positive four t squared. That gets me an eight t squared. Okay, then I have a negative 24.4 t, and then I'm gonna subtract this one over. So negative 24.4 t, minus 24.4t, 
that's going to give me negative 48.8 T. And then finally, I have my constant 85 here. So that's going to be plus 85. Plus 85 equals 0. Now let's try to solve it. We're going to use the quadratic formula. So we have T equals negative our B term. So negative, that negative is going to be positive. 48.8 T. Uh, no, just the 48.8, my bad. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. So negative 48.8 squared minus 4 times our first term times our last term. And that's all going to be over 2 times our first term. Now let's take a look at this. Let's look at what's inside, what's inside of our uh, radical here. If we type this piece into the calculator, what we get, what we get is the square root, and this is going to give us a negative 338.56. Oops. 0.56. That's a negative number in the square root. That's impossible. So essentially what this is saying is that there are no real solutions for this equation. We tried to solve it and we came out with nothing that was real. So they're not going to collide. They're not going to collide. Let's see. So no real solutions. I don't know why I deleted all that. No real solutions not going to collide. Not going to collide. And if they're not going to collide, that gives us another piece of information. That means they come to a full stop and they're not going to hit each other. So both cars' final velocity was zero meters per second. That's going to be zero meters per second. Okay, well, if we know their final velocity is zero meters per second, if we know the final velocity is zero meters per second, then we can use another one of our kinematic equations to figure out how far apart they stopped. We can use this equation right here. V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A X minus X naught. Now we have the final velocity of both cars. We were given the initial velocity of both cars. We're given the acceleration of both cars. And we were given the initial position of both cars. And we can use that formula there to figure out where they both stopped. So if we take that one and bring it back down. Oops, get that a little bit bigger. There we go. So if our final velocity is zero for both cars, that just goes away. And let's do car number one. Let's do car number one real quick. So if we go back up, our... V was 24.4 meters per second. So we have 24.4 meters per second squared plus 2A. Our acceleration for car number one was negative eight. That was our acceleration for car number one. And then we have X minus, what was our initial position for car number one? Well, it was zero. So we don't have anything there. So just X minus zero. And we're running out of time here, but we can solve this equation for x. And our initial velocity, or our final velocity was zero over there as well. We can solve this equation for x, and what we will get is the position of car one. It's the position of car one. And then we can do the exact same thing for car two. x is position of car two. And then we can see where exactly they ended, where exactly they ended. So I encourage you to try to finish out this problem on your own. Solve this for X to get the position of car one, then use different values to try to get the position of car two. And you should come up with, so car number two is going in this direction. It'll stop somewhere right here. Car number one is gonna stop somewhere right here. So work that out and see if you can figure out how far apart they were. And to check your answer, to check your answer, this should be about 10.3 meters apart, about 10.3 meters apart.